this is the me sharing some data from uh, Governor Cuomo, who on the New York Times Daily podcast was projecting that the apex was about 45 days away and that they may need 110,000 hospital beds for New York State, but they only have 50,000. But even more concerning is their projections indicate that they may need 37,000 ICU beds, and they only have 3,000 in New York State today. So this is my point about, uh, I know we're all, a lot of people following this channel are former Yang Gang, and we're very fired up about UBI, but UBI is not going to help you if you need a ventilator. Um, and if if you're in New York State and you're one of the 37,000 that they project may need a ventilator and they tell you, well, we only have 3,000, what are those 34,000 going to do? How many of them will die because they didn't have to? Um, so that's pretty crazy. Uh, and then this is me saying like, hey, why hasn't the Army Corps of Engineers and other construction companies started to scramble and build temporary hospitals? I know we got the two Navy ships, but we need more. Um, okay, here is a projection by the Harvard Global Health Institute of... Um, hospital beds in, in, a, in a given city, in this case, it's Des Moines, Iowa, if infections spread out over 6, 12, or 18 months. So if, if infections spread and you get 60% uh, infected over six months, the red line indicates the point where you exceed the number of hospital capacity in Des Moines. If, on the other hand, it only takes – it gets spread out and it spreads out over 12 months, then here's the red line indicating that you uh, you also exceed your capacity. Even if it's spread out over 18 months, you exceed capacity. There is a scenario where you have enough hospital beds in Iowa. It's if only 20 percent get infected and those who get infected are evenly spread over the next one and a half years then the folks in des moines will be fine but as you can see from this data the hospital bed shortage the critical care supply capability and it's not just the ventilators but it's also the icu beds and the nurses and the doctors those red lines should not be below the top of those bars, to be clear. When you go over the red line, you're foobar. Ask yourself, when was the last time you, you heard President Trump or Vice President Pence talk about this problem? Like, I'm not making this up. This is just, this is math. If enough people get infected and they need hospital beds and we only have so many hospital beds, what are you going to do? Man. Okay. Um, okay. Lastly, here is here is the long ass tweet I had. Yeah. So here, here's here's so we talked about the governor Cuomo. We talked about the need for more ventilators. We talked about how if you look at any major city, we're screwed. We can't just flatten the curve. We need to steepen the supply curve. And here is my challenge to not only President Trump, but also Vice President Pence and Dr. Fauci. Answer these three questions. As Americans, I believe all of us should demand answers to these three questions. Mr. President, what is our current critical care and ventilator capacity? Please give us a number. Please do not say we're working on it. Please do not say we're so impressed with our governors, how closely we're working together. We're on top of it. We have it under control. I want a effing number. And don't tell me millions. Don't tell me, don't tell me, oh, it's unbelievable. It's perfect. I don't want that shit. Want a number. 
Number two, what do your experts project demand could be in six weeks? Please provide a quantitative range, a min and a max. Number three, what are you doing to reconcile number one and number two? Please provide specific actions and milestones with dates so that we can track progress. Have you, has, has anyone heard Trump or Pence talk about this? Cuomo's the closest. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The guy talks about being this great CEO. He spent two years as a transfer at Wharton, and he doesn't talk about numbers, and he doesn't have any consistency of facts, and he just makes stuff up. Fucking. Mm. All right. Last thing I will say is uh, let me just call out some. <laughs> What's good? So need to need to need to calm down a little bit. Need to calm down. I think whenever Peter shows up in the chat, I get really fired up. You know, Peter, I love you as my brother, but you, your 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 MAGA freaking allegiance is like crazy. At any rate, uh, I see we have a super chat here from Jennifer Montgomery. So I just want to call out uh, the su the super chat money is going to help promote this channel. So I'm now spending some of that money. Uh, on Spanish audio dubbing for some of our popular videos, but also on um, ad campaigns in Facebook and Twitter to try and like grow the Nerds for Humanity audience so more people get to see the data and you know benefit from information that we can share and the interviews that we do. And Jennifer saying, we may not need to build more hospitals if we repurpose hotels and motels. Yes, I'm fine with that. That could be... Part of question number three, which is how we reconcile current supply and projected demand, and it could be, it could be um, hotels, it could be motels, it could be stadiums, it could be universities, it could be community colleges, it could be uh, military tents, whatever. Like I'm all for it, but I want to see them do it. Uh, I don't want to see this whole, oh. Uh, everything's fine. Uh, it, the, the, it'll be fine once the weather clears up. And don't worry, the market, the stock market will be coming back. Yeah, of course, I want the stock market to come back. I also don't want a bunch of people to die because we like lollygagged arguing over uh, tax breaks for companies. Like, we got to take care of our people. It's a freaking crisis. Uh, 